Uh, good afternoon, good evening everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, first of all, just an apology from Mark Williams, our Managing Director. Mark caught COVID last week and is recovering back in Perth and couldn't make it on Tuesday, but Melbourne's fortunate to have my good self today. Uh, today I'm here to talk about uh, King of the Hills, which has um, in the past six months produced its first gold bar and has been steadily ramping up and on the verge of declaring commercial production this, this, later this month. Uh, King of the Hills is Australia's newest large gold mine. Um, we'll be producing over 200,000 ounces per annum for the next 15 years. Has a reserve of 2.7 million ounces, which position, positions King of the Hills as one of the top 10 largest gold mines in Australia. Uh, one of the, the key elements of um, King of the Hills, in addition to the ore body and, and uh, mining, is the processing plant, which is uh, the lowest cost mill in the Leonora district, and which is a key um, competitive advantage in the future when we're looking to source further high-grade satellite or feed for the, for the um, King of the Hills site. The team is uh, highly qualified, myself and Mark are both ex-Extrata and Glencore. Richard Hay, our COO, is ex-Barrick Gold and Evolution. Um, and we're, as I said, we're certainly excited to be on track now for um, commercial production and a, and a big 12 months ahead of us. Uh, we're fortunate to have a very strong register, which reflects the quality of the asset. Um, here in Melbourne, the Victor Smorgan Group is our largest shareholder. Uh, we all ha also have Regal in Sydney and uh, Franklin and Electrum out of the US. But amongst the top 10, there's a number of other Australian super funds and uh, large international funds that are in the register. Uh, ironically, two years today, uh, we started the bulk earthworks at King of the Hills. And you can see it's in the middle of the outback, 30 kilometres north of Leonora. Um, and 18 months later, 5th of June, we were able to pr produce first gold this year. Um, that was during a period of significant interruption in, in the market. We had closed borders, we had labour shortages, uh, we had supply chain meltdowns. There was a period in Western Australia when there was, for example, there was no steel rebar available in the whole state. Um, yet Maca Interquip, our EPC contractor, did an outstanding job to deliver the project on schedule and built for, on budget for $226 million. We were fortunate to be shielded with uh, fixed price contracts for all of the major um, construction um, scopes of work and we were also fortunate to have ordered the mill, the crusher, uh, or power station engines back in 2020 uh, at 2020 prices, and they were all delivered to site well in advance of when they were needed. Uh, if you can just remember that picture of what we had, uh, just want to play a video now. To see, I can't see it on the screen, but you can see here what's now been built. Uh, we've just been over the crusher. We've got the crushed ore stock, stockpile feeding a, a single stage CIO um, process plant. You can see the, the sagmill operating there. The green building that just coming up is the power station, 30 megawatt power station, op operation centre, the McMahon's uh, maintenance sheds in the background. Right at the back is a 90 hectare tailing storage facility that's um, earthworks will be finished this month and, and we'll be commissioning the tailing storage next quarter. Uh, we're just flying now towards the mine. Uh, it's an existing, uh, has been operated previously as an open pit mine, we're just flying over the water storage but you can see looking into the southern pit and in the background, the northern end of the pit, we've started a stage one cutback. Where this is about six weeks old, this video, so we're about 40 metres down here. We're now down about 55 metres um, and just at the top of the roof of the granodiorite intrusion and just starting to hit uh, the higher grade ores um, yeah, uh, in the ore body. So it's an enormous operation, a fleet of 16s, 793s, um, also supported by an underground mine at King of the Hills and also an underground satellite mine at Darlow, 100 kilometres to the north. Uh, just some photos for you. So this is the sag mill that's been um, installed and now operating um, above nameplate capacity. It was built to be a 4.7 million tonne per annum um, process plant. In November, it was operating above 5 million tonnes per annum. Uh, and uh, we now, having had six months of operations, we now understand what steps need to get us to 5.5 million tonnes per annum, which we expect to be there by July. 
but just some mi minor upgrades of pumps and, and uh, motors as, is all that's required to get us there. Uh, the sag mill is a uh, 36 foot diameter sag mill. It's uh, one of three um, similar size mills that, the that are the largest sag mills in Australia at Gruyere Gold Mine and at uh, Lake Cow in New South Wales at Evolution. It's uh, currently, it's got an 18 megawatt motor. It's currently drawing 10 megawatts, just to give you some appreciation for the uh, upside potential in that sag mill. Uh, this is the six million ton per annum uh, gyratory crusher. You might get a sense that we've built the, the plant with intentions to continually look to upgrade the throughput of, of the process plant but the crusher has additional capacity um, versus what was designed. Behind the crusher is the ROM pad. Um, we're now directly tipping or coming straight out of the open pit into the, into the crusher, and, um, and the full circuit is performing very well. Uh, we're lucky to be 12 kilometres east, uh, east of the Goldfields gas pipeline. We get supplied uh, fixed price gas coming from Alinta. It's, um, designed to be operating at 18 megawatts. We're currently drawing about 14 to 15 megawatts. Uh, it's supported by a two megawatt solar power station that's modular that can be um, continually expanded over time to provide further free renewable energy for the project. I've also built a 480 man uh, village. It's a brand new village. It's got all the modern facilities with broadbands and smart TVs, um, uh, all very important to be able to attract and retain good people. We're only an hour's flight directly from Perth into Leonora and straight up the highway to site. Uh, again, it's, it's an important to be able to position in such a competitive um, labour market at the moment. I'm not a geologist, as my title suggests, so please don't ask me any difficult questions, but on geology, the King of the Hills is a, a huge uh, granodiorite intrusion, four kilometres wide by two kilometres long. Sorry, four kilometres long by four, two kilometres wide. Uh, we don't know the depth of it. We've currently drilled down to 700 metres. Uh, there's been underground mining down to, I believe, 520 metres. It's open at depth and along strike. Uh, and it's benefited, we benefit from the fact that it's been mined as an open pit mine before and also as an underground mine before. We have a very good understanding of the geology at King of the Hills. The uh, open pit has a 15 year mine life, which is quite unique for a new mine in Australia. Uh, you tend to find much shorter mine lives for new, new gold mines in Australia. It's staged over five consecutive stages, working from south, the southern end of the pit to the northern pit. We're currently in the southern end and we've completed the cutback of stage one. Uh, this photo is about 10 days old now, but you can uh, see we're progressively working our way down into the pit. But most importantly, we're uh, only now 20 metres above the granodiorite, granodiorite roof, and that's where we're starting to see um, much higher grade, much higher tonnes coming, coming out of the open pit. And from January, we'll be directly on that contact. What we are seeing at these levels when we're getting into the granodiorite is extremely positive and favourable um, grape reconciliations, and we are very bullish about the 12 months that that's now ahead of us. Uh, we're also uh, operating an underground mine that's accessed from the northern end, northern end of the pit, so that we won't be mining at that end of the pit until at least 2029. So there's, uh, we access through the portal at the bottom of the northern pit. There's a five-year mine plan that's only constrained by drilling. You can see the yellow workings of existing um, mining that was undertaken by St Barbara and Red 5 previously, and the blue is the, the stopes that we'll be mining, and we've started mining now. Uh, in the September quarter, we mined 26,700 ounces. Uh, I think we've already produced that many ounces this quarter, and it's the 1st of December. Uh, the ramp up initially was impacted by um, significant uh, absenteeism caused by COVID. Thankfully, we're past that, although we are starting to see some, in the last week or two, some COVID coming to site, I think, like most, most sites. Uh, since then, we've put a catch up plan in place with McMahon's, which has getting us back on track to be at the same budget phase position that we were planning um, at, by the end of December. And importantly, that's where we start accessing all the high grade, high tonnage coming out of the open pit. Uh, I've mentioned the fact that we are on this roof section now, 
of the ultra of the granodiorite intrusion, and in, come January we'll be uh, cutting benches straight through that intrusion, and that's when we start to generate significant cash flow. The, the processing plan has had an excellent month of November. Uh, it's achieved over 95% utilisation, over 617 tonnes per hour on average through the month, which is well above 5 million tonnes per annum. And as I mentioned before, there's, there's just three areas that we, we know need to be upgraded uh, in the circuit to be, get us up to that 5.5 million, 5 .5 million tonne per annum capacity. So uh, within the month of December, we'll be announcing commercial production and uh, from January onwards, we'll be uh, mining directly on that, on that contact of the granite diorite. Uh, I think Christy mentioned that we are in this Leonora district and um, there's lots of um, chatter around consolidation, but um, I think this is probably the best diagram of any out in the market that uh, demonstrates the processing capacity that's in the region but significantly the, the strategic advantage that we have with our King of the Hills process plant. What the uh, bubble chart represents is both the scale of, of the plant but also the uh, $12 per tonne processing cost which is the lowest in the region and it allows us in the future to be able to um, secure high grade satellite feed for King of the Hills at a much lower cost than, than anybody else. Uh, the second aspect, second dot point in the slide is just to reference the fact that we, we've always built King of the Hills with the intention to continually upgrade the, upgrade the throughput. Uh, it was designed to be 4.7. We're already doing over 5 million tonnes per annum. We anticipate being at 5.5 million tonnes per annum by July. But we are doing a study at the moment just to understand what is the optimal size of mill for King of the Hills either to process some of the lower grade stockpiles that we'll be building up over that 15 year life of mine, to be accelerating mining during that 15 years, or to be able to take um, uh, additional satellite ore feed uh, into King of the Hills to, as, as an expanded centre. Uh, I, do, I do confidently think that we'll sit around somewhere around 7 million tonnes per annum for relatively modest capital under a number of different scenarios, you could see King of the Hills easily producing somewhere between 250,000 to 350,000 ounces per annum uh, with at least a 10 year mine life ahead of it. Uh, the last slide here is just to, just to stack up uh, red fire value against our peers on an EV to all reserve basis. Uh, the bubbles represent EVs for the different companies. Um, at today, red fire is approximately $250 per ounce producing 200,000 ounces per annum for the next 15 years. Two comparisons I like to make is Gold Road and Capricorn. So Gold Road's 50% stake in the Gruyere gold mine, which was commissioned uh, back in 2019, three years ago, went through a choppy startup, but has achieved steady state, is uh, producing 150 to 170,000 ounces per annum, similar mine life, similar grade, similar cost base to King of the Hills, but is, uh, now well regarded, well respected and, and sitting at uh, over $600, $700 per ounce. The second comparison is Carla Winder, Capricorn's project that is 12 months ahead of Red, uh, King of the Hills, 120,000 ounces per annum, seven to eight year mine life, uh, low, currently lower cost base, but I think people understand that that will increase over time. It is valued at over $1,200 per ounce. So I think once we, we're on the cusp of announcing commercial production with a couple of steady quarters ahead of us, mining on that contact in the open pit, we do anticipate the Red 5 share price and our EV to all reserve will, would start to align with some of those peers. That's all for today. Thank you everyone for hanging around to um, listen to the Red 5 presentation. <laughs>